transform, take away any impurity, any form of impurity in our lives. Let the word cleanse it. The Bible says we are cleansed by the word that he has spoken. We are cleansed by the word. Wash us, Lord. From our spirit, from our insight. Liba la de chate bron site le mando cour de li alata. Ou blessé en l'aim. Yeladu chabota. We honor you for all that you do. For your help and for your goodness. Yes, Lord. For your hand upon all. Yes, Lord. And we ask that you take control and that your spirit speaks unto us. Yes. See, Lord, Lord, I am, I am a fertile and good ground. A fertile and good ground. Let your word, let your word, penetrate my life. Penetrate my life and bear fruit. And bear fruit. Let my life, let my life, be a good ground. Be a good ground unto your glory. Unto your glory. Unto your praise. Unto your praise for your kingdom. To your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord for giving us this uh, today. We're gonna go in the in the word of God. Today we talk about uh, the book of uh, Genesis, and the word is uh, from two Sundays ago, born to rule. Uh, two Sundays ago, he has uh, given us the word on. Uh, from a dreamer to ruler. But today he's giving us from the same word, born to rule. And the reason why you are born to rule, the first thing on which you are born to rule, according to the Bible from the book of Genesis chapter 1, you were born to rule over the earth. When God made Adam and Eve, the first thing that he made was to rule over the earth. So that's the first thing that he did. After the fall, God still made a provision to rule over sin. In the case of Cain and, Ab and Abel, when Cain was about to kill his brother, the Lord told him, see, what is thy countenance have changed? He says, see, what sin is lying at your door, but thou shalt what? Rule over it. Hallelujah. So the first rule that God has given according to the word of God from Genesis chapter 1 is ruling over the earth. After the fall, he says you, he wanted to, uh, the, 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 the child of God to rule over sin. And after that, the third one is to rule over a nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to discuss on this on how the Lord take us and made us born to rule. The purpose of being born to rule is that first and foremost, we make the will of God known on earth. For the word of God says, Our Father who is in heaven, allow be thy, thy kingdom. Hallelujah. Which type of kingdom is he talking about? Hallelujah. So he said, let thy kingdom Come, somebody who cannot be in the kingdom of God or who is not of the kingdom of God cannot function as a child of the kingdom. Does it make sense? If you are not in the kingdom, you cannot operate as the child of the kingdom, as the child of the king. So your kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in so the will of God, as he made in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, in the beginning was, no, no, Genesis chapter, Genesis, not, not John. <laughs> in the beginning, God, hallelujah, in the beginning, God, hallelujah. And when he made things, he said, let us now make men on the sixth day, hallelujah. If you notice, he created everything before he made man. You were supposed, let me put it this way. A house that you have to inhabit, okay? If you have a field that you bought and you have the intention to live in a house, that field that you bought, until you see the house, you cannot live inside. Does it make sense? 
You can make all your dreams and all your plans. You can even draw it very well in a 3D ways. You can even have all the architect. I, I, what was it that? You can bring all of them from everywhere. And they will draw it very beautifully. And then you have all and every dream about it. But until the house is built, you will sleep on the rain. Amen. So the house ought to be built in the physical for you to enter in. So the kingdom of God is not just spiritual. Amen. I read it again. Tell to somebody, it is not just spiritual. Let me explain. The Bible said that God is spirit, right? But according to the word of God, did God also appeared on earth? Amen? The Bible said that in past time, he appeared how? In diverse form. And in the New Testament, it says that by this time, he has appeared in the form of? Of man. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, 16 says what? God was manifest to, to in the flesh. Amen? This is what I'm trying to say. Is that even though his spirit, he still made something manifested into the physical. Does it, does it make sense? Even though his spirit, he still made something manifest into the physical. Let me put another example. Angels. Are angels only spiritual? Or should I say only spirits? The Bible says that they often time appeared in the form of men. How do we know it? Hmm? Amen. Because the word of God says that uh, you ought to be, what? Kind to stranger. Because some, by doing so, they have entertained, what? Angels out unaware. Hallelujah. In another word, when they came to your door, they did not come with big wings. Mm -hmm. Because if they came with big wings, you will know that's an angel. I don't even know if you know. You will probably just... Get out and then run away. <laughs> Hallelujah. You would think it's a big bird. I, I, when actually it's not a bird also. <laughs> anyway, so God made the heaven and the earth. You see, everything that he was about to make was spiritual. Everything. Because it was in him, in his mind. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 that uh, he took counsel in himself. Hallelujah. So when he was thinking, he was not yet revealed in the, in, in the I'm sorry, palpable, tangible. But everything that was spiritual that he intended to make did not remain spiritual. And he brought the first thing. So let's read from Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, in the beginning, God, who, God, who, God, okay, continue, created the heaven and the earth, hallelujah, amen, and, and the earth was without form, and the earth was without form, and void, and darkness, and was, you see, the earth was without form, and void, hallelujah, the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon what? The face, the of, face of the deep. deep. Hmm. You see, there was an intention for God to form something. There was a will for God to form something. But the reality is that where he wanted to form it was still void. In your life, what God wants to form in your life... Until you let him form it, you will remain void. Are you what I'm saying? Whatever God wants to form in your life, until you yourself make way and open up and allow him to form it, it will remain void. 
The heaven and the earth were void. But yet it was called heaven and earth. <laughs> he had the potential or he has a matter that he wanted to turn into tangibility, tangible something. But he needed to have a disposable or disponible, no, I was say available. Disponible, that's French. You need to have something available, willing. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall what? Eat the what? The, 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 the good of the land. Hallelujah. So let's read over here again. Read for me. Genesis chapter 1. Go ahead, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created, God created the heaven and the earth. The heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. And the earth was without form. And void. And void. And darkness was upon the. And face darkness of was the deep. upon the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of God, and the spirit of God, come back to verse two. And the Spirit of God... And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Hallelujah. Amen. Anytime God is up, uh, like forming something in your life, the Spirit of God is taking the step of taking the breath or the word out of God and he forms it into the physical. When God said, let there be light, what happened? Amen. But for it to be the word of God said that the spirit was overing. The will of God in your life first is for you to rule. Rule and not be slave. You cannot be slave of demonic activities. You cannot be slave of oppression. You cannot be slave of anger. You cannot be slave of bitterness. You cannot be slave of jealousy. You cannot be slave of anything because you were born to overcome and to rule by the will of God. But for it to happen, you need to make yourself available and you need to tell God, yes, Lord, here I am as a void. You know, if you are not void, you cannot be filled. Is that, does it make sense? But if you avoid that God wants to fill you, you cannot also refuse him to fill you. Does it make sense? Born to rule. One, over the earth. Two, over sins. And three, over the nations. And I'm trying to give the foundation of the world of today. So from Genesis chapter 1, he had the intention of making something and putting Adam into it. And when he put Adam into it, the devil also have an intention. The devil has the intention to take away from what God has given to Adam. Sometimes the devil takes something from you and instead of binding him out, you say, let the will of God be done. No. There are times, the Bible says, Jesus Christ says, that the, when you enter into the house of the what? What do you do? He said, for the kingdom of God suffers and only the, take it by. And in another word, what belongs to you, let me give you an example so you will understand. Did the land of Canaan, did God give the land of Canaan to the Israelites? Did the people who were in the land of Canaan, did they give that to the Israelite Kado? Did you understand? Did the land of Canaan, did... Was, was it God who told to Abraham that this land, I'm going to give it to you? But was the people inside the land, did they say, oh, come, take the land? <laughs> Hallelujah. What did they have to do? To fight and to take what was already theirs. The mistake of uh, many of our brothers and sisters in the Lord is the spirit of idleness. Oh, Lord, if it is that will, it will be done. But the problem is that you need to know the will so that you will know which will will be done. Does it make sense? 
When you say the Lord, let your will be done, it cannot be a random domino gambling. Let me read again. When the Lord Jesus on the, on the garden of Gethsemane, he was about to enter into what? Into the trial, right? The Bible says that uh, he came to a place where he almost quit. Why? Because it says, if it be that we'll let this cup pass away from me, right? And then finally, he finally said, but not my, but your. Did he know the will? Are you following what I'm saying? He knew the will. And he knew that that will was to carry on onto the cross. So when you don't know the will of God, the devil will play with you and take it away. Help me, Lord Jesus. What was the will of God concerning Adam and Eve? To rule over the earth, right? How did the devil come and play with them? He made them to not know with certainty what was the will of God. Did God told you you shall not touch any of the three of the garden? But that was not the will of God. It has nothing to do with any of the three. The only thing that the will of God was clear is all the three are for you. Are you what I'm saying? The will was not that any of the three you could not touch. Is that you can eat of all the three except one. So the will was clarified that all of them was for you. Just the one that was not for you. I, I, does it make sense? When the devil came... He did not focus on the one. He focused on all of them. By saying, did God told you that you cannot touch none of the trees? You cannot eat of none of the trees. But that was not what God said. So by knowing the will of God, you can answer back to the enemy. And by answering to the enemy, you can establish the will of God. Does it make sense? The will of God is not something that you randomly Call on not knowing what that is. Let me give you an example. Two homosexuals, they go to Mary and they say, Oh Lord God, let your will be done. Which one? I, I, are you what I'm saying? They can truly believe inside of them that, that they are going to marry together. And they can truly believe inside of them that this is what they call love, even though it's lost. But is that because they believe that that is then therefore it is? So the will of God is, where is it the will of God? How do we know the will of God? Tell me. By the word of God. Hallelujah. So by the word of God, it is written that he made the earth and he says, you have dominion over it. Is that a will or not? I, I don't know if you are following me. Hallelujah. So the will is first God made the heaven and the earth, created everything, put everything inside the earth, and it says, overcome. And the enemy, the devil comes. And the enemy comes and he tried to dispute, not over what you possess, but dispute whether you were intended to possess it. He did not say that this is not for you. He said, but is that everything for you? Let's go back. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to picture this. In one day, the Bible described it as two seasons or two elements. One day, the Bible described it as light and darkness. Hallelujah. Morning and evening. Depending on where you're at in the day, you can flourish 
or lose. In your life, God has designed Q level, Q possibilities. There is no three, there is no four. He did morning and night. Depending on where you find yourself, you can flourish or lose. If you find yourself on the morning of Christ, hallelujah, on the light of Christ, he will lead you into the path of the possession. Now, when I talk about possession, I'm talking about both spiritual possession and physical possession. The reason for is that you must need to first know the kingdom of God, follow the kingdom of God, know its righteousness, and that you can therefore possess the thing that he wants you to possess for the purpose of growing the kingdom of God. Yesterday, he gave me a vision. In that vision, I was with a man. And I had... A, a, a office and I, I actually it was like an office on the top here and I had the open door and I needed to cover it with the door so the man came and then we start speaking and as we were speaking I saw that he had few things that he could be able to achieve and give and and and, and then provide and I look on the corner and I saw that there was a big door that was there and waiting. And I asked to the man, I said, what about this door? I need it. He said, yeah, you can go here. I said, I'm taking it now. And I look and I saw the empty place of the office and I look at that door. It was perfectly made for this one. The morning when I wake up, I understood God turns your dream into profit. I understood that he did not intend for you to remain outside of Canaan. He intended for you to be inside Canaan. Are you following? And as he intended for the child of God, I said the child of God. I'm not talking about the, the, the uh, I don't know, the, the Samaritan. I said the child of God. One time I was reading the word of God and the Bible says, a good and righteous man leave an inheritance for his children, children. I said, I. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, so the one who does not leave inheritance, how is he called a fool? <laughs> it, it, this pinched my heart. We are born to three purposes, rule on three elements. The earth over sin, over the nations. To rule over the earth is established by God from Genesis chapter 1. Hallelujah. It is not something that was given by law or given by the state or given by the... No, no. It was given by the Lord. You see, let, let me explain what rule is so that you understand what I mean. Joseph, when he was sent out from his family into slavery, the Bible said that uh, the king, Pharaoh, renamed it. What was the name he gave to him? Who remember? Zafnat. Okay? He renamed Joseph Zafnat. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis chapter 41, Zaphnath means the God who speaks and lives. How did the king Pharaoh, in the renaming of Joseph, what does Joseph mean? Joseph means he who increase. Hallelujah. So he renames Joseph and names him Zaphnath, the God who speaks and lives. Why? Who can tell me why? Yes? Exactly, because God spoke to Joseph to explain the dream of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh noticed that the one that is in the life of Joseph 
was not just a secondary God, was not just a random God, but he was the one who speaks and leave. Here's the question. The enemy was able to recognize that the God of Joseph, even Joseph being a slave, are you following? Let me repeat again. Joseph did not have to have all the attirement, all the, 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 uh, what is that? Uh, les habits, les accoutrements, um, attire. He didn't have to have all the suit in order to be recognized of who he was under the end of God. The Bible says God gave favor to Joseph so that whatever he touched, pros. Why did God make Joseph prosper? It was not for Joseph to say he has car. It was not for him to say he has house. It was because God intended to use Joseph to save the land and the tribe of Judah. To save the people of... Help me with this one. When God elevated Joseph, it was not so that Joseph would say, Ah, now I am rich. No. He had a purpose. He was to utilize Joseph to feed the tribe and the family of Jacob. Because Joseph was in the midst of the promises of God, which God has spoken unto Abraham by telling him that I will take and make a covenant with your children after you, and I will bring them into the land. But if they are hungry and they die of famine, which one will go in the land? So imagine Joseph was put to rule and to be able to take over. And now he was like, no, Lord, you know, uh, I am just a humble man. Uh, just, just take uh, the data of Pharaoh. Well, the will of God wouldn't have been established properly. So one, you are born to rule according to the will of God. And second, to rule over sin. When God establishes you on earth, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that the, as he was born, he was already, before he was born, God already knew him in the womb and appointed him what? God appointed him prophet unto the nations. Hallelujah. For him to be appointed unto the nation, all it means is that, you know, when you are appointed into the nation, let me explain how it works. When you meet somebody who is from South Africa, you are speaking to a nation. Are you following? You meet somebody who's from Ghana. You are speaking to a nation because a nation is composed not of books, but composed of people. So if you are appointed unto the nation, the thing you must do before to be established is to rule over sin. Let's take the book of... Uh, Let's go back in the <clears throat> Genesis. Let's go back in Genesis 41. Sorry, I said 41. Uh, hold on a second. <clears throat> we go back in Genesis chapter... Chapter 4. And we will read from verse... Let's, let, let's just read from verse 1. Okay, we can read from verse 1. Uh -huh, Genesis ahead. chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain mm -hmm. and said, I have gotten a mind from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And she again bare his brother mm -hmm. Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Mm -hmm. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first slings of the, his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord has, has had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had, not, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth 
and his countenance fell. Hallelujah. Notice something. Cain and Abel, they both did bring an offering to the Lord. I, I, I don't see anywhere from the word of God where it says that the Cain and Abel went and asked God what type of offering should we give. Are you what I'm saying? But however, I just see through the lines that the heart received from the spirit of God a knowledge of that offering. Does it make sense? Whatever you offer unto God, whether your heart, your life, your family, your finances, whatever, your time, the way you offer it can be rejected if you offer it out of like a, a duty. Are you what I'm saying? Let me explain. The Bible talks, for instance, of her, of her, of her, of the offerings. It, it, Paul says, I do not want you to give out of necessity, but out of what? A cheerful heart. For God loveth what? So apply this principle over here. In that principle, what God was speaking, he said he did not respect the offering of Cain. The offering of Cain was as of a duty because he has to tilt. He has to tilt. And he came and offered that offering as of a duty. God did not approve it. But in the heart of Cain was residing sin. I was saying earlier, he made you to rule over the earth and rule over sin. So you can rule over the nations. For Cain, there was something in his heart that was not approved of God that he needed to have it circumcised. So Cain came in, he says, Lord, here is my offering. Abel comes, say, hey, Lord, here is my offering. And of the two, God approves one and disapproves the other. But when Cain is disapproved, instead of being repentant, he became angry. You know, have you ever been in a situation where God, like, God can speak his word and he points where you are lacking in the spirit and instead of repenting, you became angry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you go outside and you see people walking, if you put repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Lest you should go to hell. They become angry. This is an opportunity for them to turn around. God is like, they just came out of sin. So, the sin that is inside the bone has made them remember hell. <laughs> so, when they see the writing, you will go to hell, they become angry. But the writing did not say they are doomed to hell. The writing says, in order to avoid hell, you must have to repent. So God speaks unto Cain. He says, the way you operated, the way you acted with me was not honorable. Instead of turning around and fixing his ways, he became angry and his countenance fell. And now verse 6, what happened? God says what? And the Lord said unto Cain. And the Lord said unto Cain. Why art thou rough? Why art thou rough? rough and why is thy countenance And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well. If thou doest well. Hey, listen, isn't an offering good by itself? But how is that that offering was not approved as well? Are you following? People, let me help you. Let me help you with this one. Let me help you. When you go to work, there are times you just don't want to go. Am I right? 
<laughs> when you are going in the time you don't want to go, you don't go out of a joy. You go with grumbling. And when you arrive, your country is already falling. Because the first one who will uh, deconate with you, I will say deconate. Who will mess with you, you will mess with him. <laughs> Please stay away, okay? And, and right now, I'm not too much in the mood. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I want to help you with something. If you understand this one, you will understand where God is taking you. Taking your family, taking your children, taking your people. You will understand. The problem was not that he did not give something to God. The problem is that he gave in a way that was not honorable in his heart, not in his actions. In the kingdom of God, you cannot do anything out of grumbling. Nothing. Zero. He says, do not do the work of God out. Presumptuously, for it is a sin. So Cain comes in, he gives his offering, but in his thought, in his mind, he has a habit, an attitude that was not honorable of God. But he still presented himself before God with his offerings. God would have accepted his offering if inside he would have had a repented heart. Hallelujah. Uh, it doesn't make sense. He comes and he says, okay, Lord, God, here's my offering. You say, I should bring your offering. Hey, yeah, there you go, take it. <laughs> God says, no. I cannot accept yours because yours, your, your brother has come with a dedicated heart. A key to rule over sin is dedication unto the Lord. Simple. A key to rule over sin is, uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, being dedicated unto the Lord. Let me give you an example. Friday, I went to do some activity work. And I was beat up. Even my, even my toe was beat up. I say I was beat up. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Kola is like a tiger of thing. We uh, we like a, we uh, like a, yeah, grounded until like it's grounded. <laughs> and that Friday, I look at the time, it was eight. When I saw eight, because we have prayer at 10, I saw eight, I saw 10 at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and yet it was two hours away. But for me, eight is ten. Because by the time I turn around and I come this way, it will be already ten. And for some reason, in the morning and in the night, time, time flies. If you wake up at, uh, let's say you wake up at, uh, at two, by the time you turn around, it's seven. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when you are at work and it's 10, you turn around, it's 10 30. <laughs> you can do all you want to activate the hour. The hour will stay there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so you will be you will be beat up like cola. <laughs> so anyway, I was so beat up. I look, I told my wife. I said, baby, I won't make it tonight. I can't make it tonight. Not that I did not want to make it, is that my body could not respond. I was beat up. But at the same time, I was awakened. I was not asleep. So I sat down, I ate, and I sat down, I ate. And what I noticed is around nine, I, no, I did not even know it was nine. I heard my wife saying, hey, children, 
be ready, be ready. Get yourself ready. It's time to church. I said, how? Oh. <laughs> I looked at the time. It's nine. I said, what's wrong with her? This is nine. You say it's time for church. <laughs> hey, we still have one hour. <laughs> so I look at my, my watch. You will see nine. I'm like, wow. I said, she's getting them damn ready very early. <laughs> so I need to get myself ready early too. So I got up. And I know in my mind that my, my, my desire is to dedicate myself to the Lord. It's not a duty. Praying is not a duty. Worship is not a duty. Church is not a duty. It's a dedication of myself to the Lord. Knowing that the word of God says, if I do out of it a duty, meaning I do not want and I go grumbling. You may not want, but you ask him the strength to go willfully and joyfully. There is a difference. The Bible says that, uh, uh, it says, uh, um, those who wait upon the Lord shall, shall what? Renew their strength. That's true. So what I did, I came in and I waited upon the Lord. Simple as that. All I needed to do was to be in the presence of God and set myself in that position to let him do. But by the time I realized, I was renewed. Cain went to the God. He brought something to God. But he did not bring it out of cheerfulness. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Whether giver of your time, giver of your life, giver of your finances, giver of your uh, health, whatever you give unto God, ought to be out of a cheerful giving heart. That's a ruling over sin. So he took the offering of Abel. And Cain was rough. Let's read back. By the way, somebody said that they, they don't like to do routine. They say, some people say, I don't like to do routine. When I do the same thing over and over and over, I get bored. <laughs> when you eat, are you getting bored? <laughs> it is not eating routine. When you eat, are you getting bored of eating? No, you're not. Because even if you are poor, your belly is not bored. Your belly will remind you, you must eat. It's how you dispose yourself. And whatever your heart is, there is your... Wherever your heart is, there is your treasure. If your heart is in the kingdom of God, your treasure will be found in the kingdom of God. Let's go back. And, um, and, the Genesis, and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Hallelujah. Him. Amen. You are called to rule over sin, even if sin desires to grab on you. When you understand the principle of ruling over sin, what you give unto God will be approved. The form of sin, often, somebody, you, you may think that sin is when you commit fornication. Is, that's not only the sin that is existing. You give to God grumbling that sin. 
You are complaining about the things of God. That's sin. You are not doing the things of God with faith. That's sin. <laughs> Am I right? So, ruling over sin is nothing else but to dedicate your heart to Christ. Lord, how can I make my heart desire to do what you will? And when my heart feel it me, please use my feet to carry my heart. Does it make sense? Because I can tell you, it's not all the time that you have in your heart to do something and then to, you know, it's not, your heart, your heart is like a, like a radio. It goes like this. <laughs> Roller coaster. Sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't feel like it. Sometimes you want like it, sometimes you don't want like it. By your feet, they can carry your heart anywhere, even if your heart does not want. Does it make sense? That's why even when you don't want to go to work, your feet take you to work. <laughs> Does it make sense? Apply that principle in the kingdom. But the difference here, instead of going grumbling, you're going to receive refreshing. The Bible said that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount as ego. They will soar. And now this brings you over the third ruling. For you to rule over the nation. You may not know that the person next to you or that you're meeting in the bus or in the train or by the car, the car, the car, the car whatever. You may not know that person is the next president of a nation. You, you have no idea. There are people who were friends or neighbors or just acquaintance. And the person they knew just randomly, that person became a high level. And now they're trying to find their number. <laughs> they're like, where did I put this number? <laughs> you not know, you don't know how God went God. So when God applies in your life for you to become a ruler over the nations, all he means is that when you entertain relationship with people, be kind. Be true. Kind and true. Or if you want, graceful and true. Apply grace to people's failure and inject truth into it. What it means? Somebody is struggling with sin or with life altogether or with addiction. The grace here is the Lord is wanting you. The truth here is if you, if you don't change, <laughs> hallelujah, you're going to go to resume with the devil. So you are called to rule one over the earth, chill over sin, so you can rule over nations. And remember, nations is not you necessarily taking your airplane and then going to France. That's not nation. Amen? Nation is the person from that land. Because, again, nation formed by, are formed by human, not cow. Amen? The earth, you have cow inside, but on the nation, you are speaking of human being. Do you know that some nation changed simply because somebody out of that nation went outside and saw something else in another nation that he copied, and he came in his own nation and changed his nation? Are you following what I'm saying? For a nation to change, it does not take 10 people. It takes only one. Only one. I have my question. Are you going to be the one or is it your neighbor? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the will of God. If it was easy, your flesh would have gone in inside all the time. That's why you can, you know, you can do things that you like and you can do them easily because it is within your flesh. But to do the things of God, it's not just easy. You see what I'm saying? Your spirit has to overcome your flesh. And the grace of God will now overshadow you. So that when you are weak, then Christ will be strong. Let me give you a proof. If we were around food, talking about good things, many of you would have been <laughs> enjoying. But when we preach, some of you sleep. You understand? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Did I talk about you? <laughs> Did I talk about you? I said some of you. Did I say the name of somebody? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the things of God are not done in the flesh. It's impossible. It's just impossible. Have you ever been in a position when you pray? Oh, Lord God, I thank you that you are my Lord. <laughs> no, there are times you are preparing, you are fasting, and you know, you know. Let me give you an example. No, let me give you an example. Peter. When Peter were fasting and praying, when he finished the Bible, he became out. When he finished fasting and praying, what happened? Mm -mm -mm. When he finished fasting and praying, he fell in trance. Let me explain that a little bit and give you some hint of the note inside. It's not doctrinal, but it's just to help you understand something. He fasted and praying. Oh Lord, I need your will. Oh Lord, carry me into your will. Oh Lord, get me into the nation. I am the cornerstone. I will preach unto the nations. Mm -hmm. But all the time while he was praying, he was not still agreeing with people who were not from Israel. Are you, are you getting my point? He was praying fearfully. But in his heart, there was a disconnection between the will of God and his prayer. So when he finished praying and fasting, his body could not hold anymore. He was weak. <laughs> Ooh, ah, I'm hungry. My <laughs> endole. <laughs> so he started now. The Lord said, you want endole? Hold on a second. I ain't going to give you endole. So the Lord started now bringing from heaven snakes <laughs> to eat. <laughs> he brought monkey to eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. He brought weird food to eat. <sighs> now this is Peter. Octopus also. Peter said, Lord, I cannot eat snake. I eat ndole only. <laughs> miendo, miendo. Miendo. <laughs> Anointed salad, Lord. The Lord did like a pastor Martin. He said, You're gonna eat the. Uh, how we got that thing? The, the thing we did one time it was a. Uh, huh? No, in the beginning when he came, was that. Uh, I forgot, it was a food we did. Hot dogs. Oh, oh we do. I forgot those food, but anyway. We will do some quote unquote American food. What's the Martin like? What is this? <laughs> 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 uh, 
And then, and then, and then this is what he says. I told him, I said, you see, God cannot send you to be evangelist. He said, yeah, I will stay home. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to stay in the church, it's better. <laughs> I said, but with this one, you cannot go anywhere to eat people's food. He said, I will stay in the church. <laughs> Why? Because our body, our flesh cannot make it. Our flesh cannot. Peter, John, James, they know the Lord. They walk with him. You and I, we're trying to see the Lord. We don't see him in the physical. They saw him in the physical. They went on the mountain. You know, in the Bible, whenever you talk about going to the mountain, what does it mean? To pray. Pray and fast. So you're already in the position. They arrived in the mountain. There were three chosen out of 12. They arrived galvanized in the mountain. Now notice, all of the three, they went, huh? Jesus, you are great. <laughs> so the Lord Jesus finished praying. He turns around. Esther, get up! <laughs> Julie, stop sleeping! <laughs> Abby, wake up! And then, and then they're like, Hey, Lord, Rako Bodo. <laughs> You know, in Africa, the guy is sleeping. They wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was in a spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. But they were willing. They were disposed. They were willfully prepared, but their flesh could not carry on. He couldn't. Here's my question. When the last time you fasted 40 days and 40 nights? <laughs> you see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> did, did Moses do it? Was Moses like Jesus? Here's a question. Did Moses was like Jesus? No. But he did. Aha. So, M.0. <laughs> Hallelujah. The thing is not the impossibility. The thing is whether you are disposed. Now let's, let me let me let me let me reduce it. Let me let me let me reduce it. Can you fast for three days? How often do you fast for three days? I, no, I say how often are you fasting? Uh Combien, combien fasses-tu régulièrement? Une fois tous les trois jours, une fois tous les deux ans, une fois tous les trois mois. Ok. 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 Alléluia. So what it means is that the word of God said, pray and fast. Now let me explain to you. Pray and fast. Why are we called to pray and fast? He said, because the flesh is weak. We don't pray and fast by inspiration. We pray and fast by the word. Does it make sense? Let, let me give you an example. When the word of God says, Give unto the Lord. In the book of 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, I believe, in the, in the epistle of her, in the epistle of her, Paul, he says, let everyone decide in their heart 
were at home, what they ought you give unto the Lord. So it becomes even a personal decision to engage with what God already said. Between what God already said and our decisions is whether we are applying what is said in order that his grace can help us do what is said. Does it make sense? That's why as a human being, we cannot achieve the will of God until our flesh, the Bible says, is subjected. Hallelujah. And to subject our flesh is not just a matter of simple things. We subject our flesh by making inside of ourselves, within us, to make resolutions by saying, I say no. The power of sin is no longer upon the child of God. Does it make sense? Because the Bible says it came to what? Break, destroy the what? The power of sin. But the will of sin is not destroyed. Does it make sense? The will to sin is not destroyed. What is destroyed is that now as a child of God, you can say no to sin and yes to sin. But before, you could not say no even if you wanted to say no. Does it make sense? But today, as a child of God, you have the ability to say no or yes. So as a child of God, when the power of sin is destroyed over your life, but you still fall into sin, is that the devil who did it? Here's a problem. As children of God born to rule, to rule over the earth, to rule over sin and over the nations, what happened is that when God positioned us onto level in order to become rulers and leaders, we oftentimes are afraid. We oftentimes see ourselves unable. We become like a, we become like a, what's his name, Gideon. Lord, I'm just from the least of the tribes who are the least of the tribes of the least of my family. Here's the thing. If God chose you, does it mean you are qualified? But he qualifies you by his choice. choice. It's not because you are qualified that he chooses you, but it's because he chose you that you became qualified. Does it make sense? So the choice of God at the time he chose you, at the same time, he brings in the talent and the gift and the qualification that you did not have before he put his eyes on you. I hear sometimes people saying, Lord, how could you use a broken person like me? Well, before he used you, you were broken. The day he made a choice to use you, hallelujah, he fixed you so you can function. Because broken things don't function. Does it make sense? So it is as the Lord told unto Paul, in your weakness I am strong. In your weakness I am strong. So the strength of God is to put you in position to rule over the earth, the, over sins, and over the nations. Now the question is, are you willing? Are you disposed? Let's finish this and then we will close from Genesis chapter 41. Genesis 41 says, <clears throat> and we read from verse 41 also. Genesis 41, verse 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set you thee, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. 
And Pharaoh took... No, no, sorry. Start from verse 37. Verse 37. Mm-hmm. On the screen. Mm-hmm. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Listen. The unbeliever is made by God. Because they are made by God, they can recognize what God does in your life. They don't need to be a Christian to know that God is in your life. In this case here, a slave, a Hebrew boy, was nowhere close to be able to enter Pharaoh's court. But the spirit of God that was on him made him do what he does differently. Even when he was a slave or a prisoner, he was still put in charge of others being a slave and being a prisoner. And finally, when the time arrived for him to be presented to the king, Pharaoh, to rule over the nation, because he ruled over sin first, amen? When the lady came to him and said, let's lay down the wife of Potiphar, amen? He decided to rule over sin. First and foremost, nobody was there except the two. Hallelujah. He could have agreed, gone for and who knows? But by disagreeing, is that because he disagreed to betray God that the, he didn't have problem? Rather, he had problem because he honored God. However, the problem that he had because he honored God did not make him angry, frustrated, bitter. No. Rather, he kept the ways of God even as if God has blessed him above and beyond. So he made the will to keep the will of God. That's all. He made a decision to keep the will of God. Even when doing the will of God was for him detrimental. Does it make sense? But in the plan of God, he was to use him so that the other people will live. His own family will live. God wants to use you so that the other people will see also the will of God. Imagine, I am saved, and I go to heaven, but my neighbor, who is not saved, is with me 41 years, and he never heard of God. Isn't that weird? So, as a child of God, we are called to rule over sin, so that we can also rule over nations. For Joseph was recognized by Pharaoh even when he was not a child of the kingdom. I mean, of the kingdom of Egypt. But God in him caused, caused Pharaoh to recognize his spirit in him. Let's continue. Let's continue. And Pharaoh said unto his servants. Yeah, go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto jo And Pharaoh said unto Joseph. Now give me. Yeah, give me. Yeah, okay, continue. 39. Uh-huh. For as, for as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. But at the time, Pharaoh had magicians, enchanters, sorcerers. But yet, he had to agree that the Joseph was different. Continue. Verse 40. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be over my house. Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Mm -hmm. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand mm -hmm. and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen mm -hmm. and put a gold chain about his neck. Mm -hmm. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, 
bowed the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphenath. Yeah. Zaphenath Panea. Panea. Mm -hmm. And he gave him to, to wife Asenath, the doctor the daughter of Potiphera, mm -hmm. priest of old. Mm -hmm. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Amen. So here's the end. Joseph was given by Pharaoh to rule over the land of Egypt. And yet the land of Egypt was not a welcoming land to him. This is what it means. You do not need to have people welcome you for, so that uh, you can rule or you can be used by God over these people. And I read again. You do not need to have people welcome you so that the God will use you. No. God can use you even people do not welcome you because of the spirit of God that is in you. When you are asserted by the kingdom of God and then you are appointed in the kingdom of God to rule over the earth and over sins and over the nations, God gives you an ability to be recognized even by the enemy. The enemy, we have to agree that yes, indeed, the spirit of God is upon the, even if he's angry against you, you will still recognize that the spirit of God is in your life. How did the people recognize the Spirit of God in the life of Joseph? One, he trusted the Lord at all times. Two, he did not bow his knees to the trials of life. Three, he did not become angry, frustrated, bitter, and unforgiving. Hallelujah. The Bible says that his brothers, the ten brothers, has betrayed him. He didn't go around carrying that betrayal in his mind, thinking about the day you're going to get them around and he's going to get them some good. No. He had in his mind one thing. How do I keep the charge of the Lord? When they came finally to him and they bowed to him just as he saw in the dream, he did not say, you see, I told you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, how many of us do that? When you talk to somebody, oh, you should not do this, and the person doesn't, uh, wrong happen. You say, I told you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he kept in his mind one thing. He was appointed for that day. He knew he was appointed for that day. So a ruler has a heart of a shepherd. A ruler has a heart of a shepherd. You know, sheep are complicated to lead. Like to, like, and then from all the animals, from all the animals on earth, the word of God compares us as sheep. Because naturally, human are difficult to lead to salvation. But you as a child of God, called to rule over the earth, called to rule over sin, and called to rule over the nations, God asks you that you ought to have a heart, not only of ruler, but of shepherd. So Joseph was called Zafnat Paniya, which means the God speaks and lives. Even though his name, Joseph himself, means who, he who increased, but still how God used him has established in the life of everyone around him the blueprint of God. You are called to rule over the earth, over sin, and over the nation. Allow God to use you to bring into the life of someone, into the life of other nations, into the life of your communities, into the life of your neighborhood, a change that God has assigned, that God has designed. You are not too little. 
You are not too weak. Shall we pray? Father, I bless your name, Lord God, for the opportunity that you give unto us, Lord God, to carry on on this Sunday, on this day. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you will uh, stretch our understanding into thy kingdom. You will stretch our heart, Lord God, into thy will. That you will stretch us, Lord God, into the place and the into the place, Lord God, and the land that you have prepared and prepared ahead of us. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit will help us do what pleases unto you at all times. Let our mind be settled by your word. Let our mind be settled by your will. Let our mind be settled by your ways. Use your children. Guide your children. Give them, Lord God, the strength to continue and the strength to overcome. Provide unto them, Lord God, uh, the spirit that is needed to know, to discern, and to have your wisdom. I thank you for all that you do in the life of each. Those watching, those over here, those who will be watching later, I pray that your word, Lord God, be true in our lives continually. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen.